we apply in the dinosaur these visual references that we have taken. As we told you, we are going to make a kind of a mix of everything we have taken. We are going to put it in a blender and see what comes out. The result is what we have here, which is what we are going to talk about now. Now we are going to start with the first one, which is the Egyptian vulture, which is the one you have here. The Egyptian vulture's head was one of the references he used. It is very clear that he used that yellowish head as a reference. That yellow stands out a lot and draws a lot of attention, and he also used the light feathers as a reference. David had that quite clear from the beginning. It was later, when he found the Monster Hunter references, that he decided to add dark feathers with those purple and violet tones, because he didn't want to use very muted tones, he wanted it to look very fanciful. If he had painted these feathers all white and with very light tones, it would have been dull and boring. That's why David chose these magentas and these purples. The feathers that surround the whole head of the dinosaur, especially the ones that are close to the eye, are quite light. The color scheme of those feathers is very close to what we see in the Egyptian vultures reference. We will show you the reference a little closer. We have that yellow head with those orangey touches, some reddish tones near the eye. We have the central part of the eye which is quite dark, but there's also another reference that we find useful that draws our attention and that we also want to use, which is that part of the beak. That final part of the beak that is quite darker that compensates all that amount of saturated yellow. As you can see, it is very well compensated with the light feathers as well. The feathers are quite white and the beak is quite black. We we have lack of color in some points and it is very concentrated in the center of the head and also in the area that is close to the eye, with those reddish oranges and yellows, which is in this case the most important thing. From here we have used the yellow for the dinosaur's beak to make it stand out. Let's go now to the other one we have here, which is the bearded vulture. In this case what we are using as a reference, we are going to zoom in the picture so that you can see it better. What did David use? Well, there are several things repeated, like the feathers, which are quite light. We have that part that is close to the eye, which can be seen very easily that David used it as a reference, which is that black area that goes towards the nose, and also that red eye, which in this case is a lighter yellowish circle. He chose other color because he didn't want to use more yellow. We have a much lighter circle on top of that red that attracts a lot of attention and the little black dot. He didn't use a lot from here but he found it useful to paint these areas, the eye most of all. And he also added this darker part that surrounds the eye which makes the eye stand out even more. The other reference we have, as we said, is a monster, a Monster Hunter character. He chose it because it enhances everything we have said so far and you can see how in the beak we have mixed the two previous references, only the two references are from two birds that exist and now we are going to use a video game character as a reference. So it was very useful to have several references, some references from real life and others from a video game, some characters that are not real, they don't exist. This helps David when extrapolating certain things, when he transfers things to figures. To have references that are not real can help us achieve more easily the effect or the results we want. We find that darker beak, we also have the eye surrounded by those reddish and orange tones that are also the ones he applied in the dinosaur to make the change to yellow, but also you can see those very light feathers that are very close to the eye or surrounding the eye. This is something, as we said, that is repeated in the previous references, but it is a reference that is not real, it is also valid and very useful. The more references we have, the clearer we will surely have what we want to do and what we have to do. So the choice of colors for the girl, let's say that is defined by the colors we have already put in the dinosaur. So what colors are those? Well, the most important thing is the amount of green David added. Let's say that if in the dinosaur what predominates are those magentas, pinkish, reddish tones, in the girl it will be the other way around. We are going to use greenish bluish tones or turquoise, which is a little bit the mixture of these two. So we have those reddish pinkish magenta tones in the dinosaur and in the girl they are going to be the opposite. They are going to be those greens blue. So this is a figure David painted for Big Child. 
for the legends of the Jade Sea project quite a long time ago, we want you to see how the gold and non-metallic metal of the cannon is much darker because David wanted to make it old or eroded. He didn't want to make a very polished metal. You can also see how at some points the metal reflects some cooler tones, greenish tones or bluish tones, to integrate it with the general ambience of the figure and its base. There are a lot of blues that surround the figure and for example the point where we can find most of the yellow is just here, the light that goes with the central light of the figure. David used a little bit of yellow and orange that are warmer tones to focus our attention on some specific parts like the highest part of the cannon, the highest part of the hand, the shoulder, the head and doing that we focus our attention on the most important part of the figure. Here as well, a little bit here and it goes towards the head. We have to make the most important parts of the figure stand out. So as you can see we use those warmer tones, even on the golden part we use a little bit of yellow which is a primary color and it's the most luminous among the primary colors and we use it to make the cannon, the hand and the head stand out, the head most of all. This is Alfonso's Roman that most of you probably have seen already. In terms of color it's very similar to David's Stormcast. It has a lot of green tones that contain quite a lot of yellow, but they're still green tones that help create that non-metallic metal without using too much yellow. And you can see how he concentrated the white on very specific points surrounded by dark areas to achieve that very big contrast between a very luminous reflection with a lot of white and dark parts that help us see that the contrast of that material is very big and that is metallic. The work Alfonso did with this figure is fantastic. It's really pretty and it's quite close in terms of color to David's Stormcast. And lastly, we wanted to show you two figures of Marvel United David painted for Cool Mini. You probably know this game because Alfonso painted some figures as well. Alfonso recorded the process of some of these figures for the Academy. So here David painted the non-metallic metals in a flatter way. We don't have very big contrast, he didn't draw lines and reflections, he just painted light planes, middle tones, it has a darker tone that creates that shadow effect, and then the most important thing on these figures is outlining. As you can see on the photo, the reflection doesn't have a lot of white and it's not that intense, and we can find those very dark shadows we had on the Stormcast. Outlining is very very important here to achieve the metallic effect. So here we have the chromatic circle and we are moving through it. The ochre, that ochre that we started with, let's say that it would be over here, okay? Depending if it has a little bit of green, it would be closer to green, between green and yellow. We are going to move towards that orange, we are moving towards the orange. And we are a little bit more over here, okay? Where are we going to go now? Well, we are moving towards red, but we are not moving towards a super warm, super saturated red, but we are moving, as I said, towards a red that is like a wine red, which will bring us closer to purple, which is the color we have to reach. Remember that we are following the color reference of the concept art that our friends from Scale75 gave us. Where do we go now? We go towards that dark purple tone. We have to see in the chromatic circle how we make this change of colors so that our eyes perceive it in a soft way. In the end, that our eye perceives this change of colors in a smooth and not abrupt way is by making this change by moving through the chromatic circle. The chromatic circle always has the answer to all our color problems. The chromatic circle will always tell us the answer to every color problem we have. It will solve it in an easy way, because what we have to do is to move through this chromatic circle. I mean, we have a part of the skin with that warm orange ochre tone, and then we have the tail, for example, that has that greenish blue. Here you can see very well how we have that part of the tail that has that greenish blue turquoise, and then we have the ochre orange parts. 
because what we are doing is moving from something over here to something over here. The only thing is that in this case, even if it's a two-colored skin, it's the same skin, right? We have to make that change so that our eye perceives it in an easier way. Why are we going towards orange and red and not going straight from yellow to blue, which are much closer in the chromatic circle and we would have to go just in the other direction over here? Why don't we do it this way? Because in the concept that Scale75 gave us, Pisces has those orange touches, okay? Let's say the skin, that skin is orange, it's yellowy. It also has that orange ochre, it has that touch of red. So we have to go to red, we have to go through red to add those tones. If we did it the other way, we would not be adding red to the figure, we would have to omit the red. So it would be quite a greenish ochre that then changes to that blue but in our concept as i said we have those parts that go towards red and we also have those parts with purple with violet that purple is also quite important in that concept we have that part of the skin that is orange it has orange right david used much more of that red that wine red which is a little bit warmer to make the change less abrupt he wanted the change to be less abrupt, so that everything is a little bit more unified, so to speak. There's not that sharp jump from those bluer turquoise parts to that orange. Actually, the interesting thing we want you to see about this is how we move through the color wheel. Why are we moving towards the red purple? Because the concept has red purple, so we have to go through almost the whole color wheel. If you realize, we go from yellow and we have to get to the other primary, which is blue, passing through red as well. So we have to go through all the chromatic circle. That's why we told you that Pisces was very interesting in terms of color and in terms of talking about color theory, because it has a lot of the three primary colors. What happens is that those three primaries are distributed in a fairly balanced way and the concept itself gives us the answer on how to do it. But we don't do it with very saturated tones or a very large amount of the three primaries. That red, blue and yellow are not very intense. Let's say that we find them but mixed, without being so pure. They don't have such a great importance. If we used the three primaries in a more pure way, the figure would be very parchisi, it would be very colorful. In fact, that is why it is always very difficult to make the three primary colors to work together. We are going towards something like this, maybe darker because we are already working in darker planes. And then we are going directly towards something more blue. It could be something like this. And we go straight to the darker turquoise tones we already have to make the change, for example, on the tail, on the body of the tail. And when it comes to painting the scales, if you, if you realize, we start with yellow ochre and we end up with a greenish turquoise, which has yellow in it. We have practically done the whole turn around the chromatic circle. That's really where the key to the whole color scheme is, how to make them match. Because let's say that the decision David made of going through red is because of this abrupt change from turquoise blue tones to those orange and purple parts of the skin. It is a very abrupt change. What we are looking for is that you don't perceive such an abrupt jump. We want it to look more natural, the change from one color to another. Although they are two different parts of the skin, it's the same skin, so we want to achieve a more natural and not so abrupt and contrasting finish. It's because in the concept, those orange parts, those parts with that orange that attracts so much attention, are in the parts of the belly, the lower part of the belly, on the tail. They are parts that look down and that are totally the opposite to what we want to highlight with the painting, which is the upper part of the figure, which is what we have here. It is what we have been seeing before, which is all this part. That's what we want to highlight the most. If we work with some very very powerful tones of orange, 
If we work with some very powerful tones here, which are the tones of the concept art, what happens? Well, those parts begin to attract much more attention. They will contrast much more with the turquoise that we have in the upper part of the figure, in the part that is closest to the head, and we will get higher contrast. But perhaps we get the opposite effect, which is that those oranges attract much more attention than the turquoise part of the head and that our first look goes to those orange parts. But we don't want that. We are not looking for that. We want that what attracts our attention the most in the figure is the highest part and the face most of all. So that's why we are using those muted oranges with those cooler reddish tones that make the shift towards purple and have such a striking result. The contrast is not that high. So let's see finally some other parts, for example the part of the scales. The part of the scales is an important part. You have seen in the process that it is not difficult, you have to choose which parts or which scales are the brightest ones, but we didn't want it to be a part that draws too much attention. In fact, there are some scales that we could have outlined a little bit more to draw more attention or we could have um, added a little bit more light, but we didn't really want to emphasize that much more because it is a difficult process, it is a difficult project, it has many elements, it is quite large, in fact, in the photo it doesn't look like it, but it is quite large, it is quite big. It is very easy to make another part stand out much more than the part that we want to stand out because the figure from the waist up is really small compared to the tail and the lowest part of the body. Those parts are very 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 big part. It is very easy to make another part stand out much more than the part that we want to stand out because the figure from the waist up is really small compared to the tail and the lowest part of the body. Those parts are very 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 big parts. So it is very important to balance it quite a lot in this aspect.